dear students in this screencast video lecture we are going to see the different methods that have been employed to measure the growth of the microorganisms here these methods have been divided into direct cell counts viable cell counts measuring of the biomass and measuring of the cell product the second column shows the characteristic features of the particular methods employed and their limitations See, if you look at into the direct cell counts, which refers to determining the total number of cells which can be used for bacteria that may not be cultured there in your petri plate. Here, under this direct cell count, two methods could be employed. One is the direct microscopic count, which refers to counting the number of cells by using microscope. It is a rapid method, but it requires at least 10 power 7 cells per ml, then only the counting will be much effective. Here the main drawback is count includes both living as well as dead cells. And the next direct cell counting method is counting using certain instruments. Here two instruments are commonly employed. One is the Coulter counters and another one is a flow cytometer that counts the total cells there in the diluted solutions. For example, in flow cytometry, counting is based on linking the fluorescent dyes or tags to the organisms. The next counting method is viable cell count, that is living cells counting. Here it could be done with the help of plate count, membrane filtration as well as most probable number, which is referred in short as a MPM. Here the explanation for viable cell count is it is used to determine the number of viable bacteria present in a sample but it includes those that can able to grow under a given condition say for example under a given temperature or pH which organism is growing that alone can be counted and it requires an incubation period of approximately of a 24 to 48 hours or even longer then different kinds of medias can be used to enumerate species specific groups of bacteria that is selective and differential medias can be used to enumerate the bacteria present in the sample. The first one is plate count. It is a time consuming but technically simple method that does not require any sophisticated equipment. It required only petri dishes as well as test tubes. Using test tubes you will go for a serial dilution and the media containing petri dishes were used for plating. It is generally used when the sample found to have at least 10 power 2 cells per ml. The next method is membrane filtration. It concentrates the bacteria by filtration before it is getting plated. It is commonly used to count the number of cells that have been present in a high, highly dilute environment. Say for example, cells present in the sea water or in the river water can be best enumerated by the membrane filtration count. The most probable number is a statistical estimation of likely number of cells that could be present there in the sample. So automatically it is not a correct or precise measurement but a approximate number of cells could be counted by using this method. It is also again used to estimate the number of bacteria in relatively dilute solutions. The next method is measuring of biomass. Here biomass refers to the total weight or total quantity of the cell. Here it is correlated that to the cell number. Three different methods have been used under the biomass measurement. It includes turbidity, total weight which is also referred as a gravimetry method of estimation. And the third one is measuring the chemical constituents of the cell. Among this method, Turbidity measurement is a very rapid and routinely used method there in the microbiological laboratory. Here a one-time correlation of turbidity with that of the plate counting is required in order to use a turbidity data for determining the exact cell number. The next one is a total weight measurement or gravimetry. It is a tedious as well as time consuming method. However, it is one of the best method to be used for filamentous group of microorganisms mainly to measure the fungal biomass. The third one is a chemical constituents measurement. It refers to measuring the amount of a given element that have been present there in the cell. Say for example, 
measuring the amount of nitrogen that may be present in the cell. But this method is not a commonly used method to measure the microbial growth. The next method is measuring the cell products. Say it includes measuring the amount of acid produced by the cell or gases produced by the cell or ATP produced by the cell. These methods are rapid but must be correlated to cell numbers. They are frequently used to detect the growth but not routinely used for quantification of the organism present there in the sample. For measuring the acid produced by the cells, titration can be used. It can be able to quantify the amount of acid produced by the cells, but using a pH indicator often help in detecting the growth of the organism easily. Carbon dioxide can be measured by using a molecule that fluoresces when the medium becomes slightly more acidic, that is after the formation of carbon dioxide and accumulation. So, these gases can be even trapped there in the inverted Durham's tubes which also indicates the qualitative estimation of the gases produced by an organism. The third one is the ATP measurement. For this, the firefly luciferase enzyme is used to catalyze the light emitting reaction when ATP is being synthesized in the cells.